Before we continue with the video, if you like what I'm doing here on this channel, please consider subscribing. It helps the channel a lot. Anyway, let's get back to the video. Welcome back to my Create an RPG series. In this episode, we will be continuing to work on our damage system to make sure that it isn't uh, doing multiplicative or multiple damage events on a single attack. So let's get into that. To refresh our memories, when we were doing our attack, you could see that we get a trace hit for each of the different frames that our attack is registering the attack for. Now, this is not what I want to achieve with this, so we will be making some adjustments to this. Going to our component for combat, we can go to our tick and we can re reason here that uh, the results we're getting here by the multi-line trace channel is something we might want to keep track of so that we don't hit a character multiple times. So what we'll do here, instead of having it like here where we're uh, looping through uh, multiple objects and then trying to deal damage to all of them, what we'll do instead is we will unhook this, apply damage, and instead make a custom event. And we'll call this attempt damage. And we'll call from this loop body attempt damage instead. Like so. And this we want to have an input of the type actor to match this one. So we'll add an actor here. Add actor object reference. We'll call it uh, damaged actor. It's a good descriptive name. And we'll just hook up the hit actor over here like so. Now we'll take the event and we'll bring it down a bit here. So we have some, this should be a good place, I think. And now we can instead go in here and say, just apply damage to the, the character like we did before. So now this will exactly be the same thing. We have just put it into a function, right? So now we need to have some sort of code here to determine if we're hitting an actor that we've already hit. So to do that, we might also have a situation where we're hitting multiple characters at the same time. So we can't just keep track of one actor, we need to keep track of an array of actors. So we'll make an array called um, already damaged actors or something like that. We'll make it of the type actor, object reference and array. So step one would be to go and get this array and say, well, does the actor we want to damage, is it already in here? So we'll type in contain, so we can check against a specific item, which means we can check against the object reference we're sending in here. We can then, let's unhook this for now, and add a branch and say we should, if we are not currently containing, that's not what I wanted to do, if this array is not currently containing the actor, then we haven't damaged it yet. So at that point, we want to damage the actor. So we'll do this. <clears throat> and the actor that we want to damage is, of course, the one that we're sending in here, like so. So, okay, so now we're only able to damage an actor once, which is good, I suppose, in, in a way. Uh, the problem here is we're not actually managing Actually, we haven't actually added it yet. We need to also add this to... Uh, we can do that before here. Let's add... Drag out the array and say add. So we will add the reference of the damaged actor to the array. Then we will damage the actual actor. And now we should only be able to do it once. And we can see we can't really see that yet because we're not actually dealing any damage to the character and by that i mean uh, we have a damage event over here the damage taken but we don't actually do anything with it so uh, what we can do is we can remove this print and say the damaged actor get component by class we can get the attributes because that's where we keep our health, like so. And we make sure that it's valid. And if it is valid, 
we go ahead and change its health. So uh, let's see here. We need to get this one and we need to change attribute when it is valid. And the attribute we want to change is going to be health. And the value we want to change it with is depending on the damage, but damage is going to come in as a positive number. We want it to be a negative number if it's the damage because that's uh, we want the health to be reduced. So we'll just multiply this by minus one, which means it will be a decrement of that amount of damage to our health. And we'll plug that into our value change like so. And we'll say that the type should be base value. Uh, in addition to that, we should also be good at make an origin and say who is uh, who is doing the damage and things like that. So let's give ourselves a little bit more space. So uh, the actor is getting the, the, the pawn reference. There we have it. Pawn reference is the actor that is the origin of this, and the controller would be the controller of the pawn. So get controller from pawn. And we hook that up. So now we're sending that information properly as well. So now, in theory, we should be, when we're getting a damage taken event here, we should be sending that damage and decreasing the value of the health of that character. So let's try this out. So we'll go forward. We will get the, uh, the multiple hits. And now if we go down here to our characters, we can see we have a uh, third person character two here. We can see in the view here from the camera that it has that it is actually the character that we hit. And if we go and check its attributes, we can uh, do, 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 do we not have it? Surely we should see this, right? Attributes. Is it not exposed? Let's see. Let's go check our attributes. Uh, attributes, blueprint component, and we see we have health and it is not uh, instance editable so we'll do that so we can actually see it and we'll try again we walk up to the character we hit it like so and let's minimize and then go out here and we can check and see our third person character number two we find its attributes we find its health and we can see that its base value is now 90 instead of 100 and if we hit it again it doesn't update automatically apparently, so let's go and do that. And actually it didn't update. Right, that was the point I was actually going to make. You can see that the base value is not going to be changed here because we still have it in our array of damaged actors. So even though we're hitting again here, we're not actually clearing that. So going back to our blueprint component for combat, we want to clear this array uh, at some point. And a good place to do this, in my opinion, would be when our starting of damage detection happens, because that's when we start to uh, check for valid candidates to actually damage. And the reason for this we will come back to in a later episode as well. But for now, we can get this and we can clear it. And like so. And let's try this again. So we have our character. We hit it. And we go and check that character. We see that in its attribute, its health is 90. We hit it again. It actually does hit uh, update while I'm doing this. You can see that the hit points actually go down 10 by each uh, hit, regardless of how many times the trace actually detects him being hit. So now that is working essentially how we want it to work, which is good. A point I want to make here, though, before we move on is that uh, what we have done now is essentially we have determined that we are going to be making use of an event that's happening on the character and we're going to be making that to keep track of changing our attributes. Um, 
you need to be be certain of when and where certain events happen because like i said this take any event event is actually happening on the third person character so if we take uh, any damage event here and we print out highly oh neighbor um, then checking our debug messages in the top left now you can see that among other things we will be saying highly ho neighbor up there and that is because that event is now happening in two places it is both happening in our third person character and it is also happening in our blueprint component here now so you need to make sure that in this case when it comes to combat that you have one place where you're actually handling the damage so you don't accidentally do it in multiple places and then get lost on uh, where things are happening so in this case we're never going to be handling it in our third person character but rather only in our blueprint component for combat and we don't have any uh, floats or integers on our character which we're keeping track of to like see how damaged we are we're only doing it by using our attribute system <clears throat> so so that is how we're determining and defining how our, how healthy our character is going to be which is also reasonable because how we have set up uh, the user input, uh, the user interface here to actually represent the health of us based on attributes and such. Just a little side note that you're keeping track of all your different uh, uh, events and where you're hooking into them to possibly override them or have additional functionality for them. I think this might be a good place to stop for now. I hope to see you in the next episode. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you did not like it, leave a dislike. Leave any suggestions or comments you have down below. Subscribe and share this video if you want to see more like it in the future. That is all for now. Keep on learning. Take care.